Hi everyone, this is Doreen from Privies and Prims. Um, someone asked me to show them how I make little pillows or anything else that is a machine sewn when it's punch needle. Uh, the little pillow I will show here up above. I have already sent it back to the shop that I made it for, so I can only include this picture. Um, but now I'm going to show you how I do that with the machine. Okay, someone asked me to show how I make a little pillow with the punch needle. So I'm going to show you here. I have cut a wool backing. Let me see if I can get us some more light. Okay, I cut a wool backing to go on the pillow right sides together. This is the back side of the punch needle. I'm going to stitch all the way around with the machine and I'm going to come just in on the punches. If I stayed on the weaver's cloth, then you would see the weaver's cloth. So if you're going to put some kind of trim around the outside to cover that seam, then you're fine to stay on the weaver's cloth. But I am not going to be doing that. So I'm going to stitch right on top of that first row of punch. So if you can see, I think you can see it right there. I am right on the edge, but I am not on weaver's cloth. I am on the punched area. I'm going to go all the way around, not leaving any opening because I'm going to cut a slit on the back in the center and that will be my opening. So again, I'm just on that very first line of punching. And when you're done, you can look back and see if you're seeing any stitching on the weaver's cloth. And if you are, then you know that you need to stitch closer in on top of the punched area. Okay, I can get a little closer there. Do a manual turn on that one. I'm using a dark thread now that gets hidden on every area except at the bottom where the grass is. So you want to use, oops, that one went too far. You want to use a thread color that will, um, still going backwards. There we go. You want to use a thread color that's going to blend in with the punched area. Like, so you don't want to use white on black because you would see the threads on that seam where it separates just a tiny bit. I'm coming up on that last corner here. I'm going to knot that off. Take that out. <coughs> Excuse me. For some reason I'm getting these knots on the back when I go back and forth sometimes to knot it. That happens. Actually, it's happened on every single corner. I can see it. See that? It's got there and on that one. That one and that one. So I will check it. Oh, my thread came out. So I'm going to check it and make sure that I still have a seam. And it looks like right here it doesn't. So I'm going to rethread this and fix it. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is trim. And again, when I turn this, I will make sure that these corners are actually stitched. I went over one that didn't look like it was because I don't want it to come apart. But for some reason, it's knotting up when I do the corners. All right, so that's how I've trimmed it. And now I'm going to cut a slit right here. So I'm going to grab this like that. Make a little snip. And then put my scissors inside, turn it around, go like that, and then I'm going to turn it right side out. Now, if this was round, of course, you would have to snip all your curves. 
but I did trim the corners in. I'm turning this around. And then I use my scissors, make sure they're closed, and I push out my corners carefully. But this is wool, so, and it's pretty tough. Sometimes instead of doing hard square corners, I will do curved ones, and I find that that's easier to stuff it. All right, so that's what I have. It looks like a little tissue box here, you know, a little pack of tissues you get for your purse. And this is the other side. So I'm going to stuff it now, and then I'll show you how I close it. All right, so I've got some, this is just black pearl cotton DMC. I've got it stuffed. And then what I'm going to do is just whip stitch this closed. It's going to be hidden so it doesn't have to be all perfect and pretty. Just go about maybe an eighth inch in. Try to tuck all those fuzzies in there. Maybe an eighth inch in on the wool and just pull that shut. And again, this is not going to show so you don't have to... Uh, worry about it being perfect. It's just to hold it closed. And then I'm going to knot that off. My needle came unthreaded. Cut that. Now I'm going to take my wool that I used for the backing cut those fuzzies off and I'm going to hold it there to measure how big of a piece I need and then I do this because um, I want to cover this whole thing and just a little past the edges and then I'm going to cut that about a half inch wide I usually use a rotary cutter but this one has actually lines on it so I can do that so then I'm going to place that on there, put a pin on it, thread my needle again because it came undone, and then I'm just going to whip stitch that on. Now this one you do want to make sure that you know your stitches are nice and neat, but I'm going to go under here so that my knot is actually underneath there. And then I'm going to come up and I'm about a quarter inch in on the wall. And I'm just going to do straight whip stitches. It's hard to see because it's black on black. Let's see if you can see it. Whoops, wrong place. You probably can't see it because it's black on black. But anyway, so that's all you do. And then you just go around and whip stitch that until it's finished and you have covered the backing and that way you don't have a hand stitched seam around the edge anywhere and I like to do this better sometimes um, if it's bigger I would cut my piece of wool back here in the shape I'm sorry the camera moved sometimes if it's bigger I will cut this piece of wool in the shape of a heart like a really wide heart instead of it just being a rectangle. But that's all I do. Oh, I keep hitting the camera, sorry. And then I just go all the way around and then knot it, and that's it. So that's how you finish it. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you on the next video. Don't forget to give that a thumbs up and hit subscribe. And check out my other videos because I'm starting to do some pattern giveaways since I was gifted some for that purpose. So you don't want to miss that. I'll see you on the next video. Bye.